Hey guys, Tyler here. Star Trek is known for many things, among them the seeming ubiquity of humanoid aliens throughout the Milky Way. While many of these species possess distinctive characteristics, such as pointy ears, forehead bumps, or unique skin coloration, they nevertheless retain the prototypical humanoid body plan. But there are some Star Trek races that do at least take some more creative liberties, even if they're still reminiscent of familiar Earth life. Among these are Star Trek's various cat people, including the Cations and their supposed cousins, the Kazinti. Longtime members of the United Federation of Planets, the Cations are fairly common throughout Starfleet, and there have been multiple named Cation characters in the franchise. The Kazinti, on the other hand, are a recurring antagonist species, though there are now also a few Kazinti in Starfleet too. In this video, I'd like to examine what we know about both of these species, comparing them to our expectations about aliens in real life. Let's get started. According to Trek lore, Cations began attending Starfleet Academy by at least the 2250s, if not earlier. Star Trek IV The Voyage Home confirms the Cation homeworld has a seat on the Federation Council by 2286. But even before this, in the late 2260s, a Cation lieutenant, Mares, serves aboard Kirk's Enterprise in the animated series. Biologically, the Cations exhibit feline-like features, with short faces, triangular ears, large, usually yellow eyes with slit pupils, whiskers, fangs, and a tail. They have a variety of fur colors, and in some instances, a digitigrade foot structure, though some are shown possessing a plantigrade structure, and they are shown possessing either four or five fingers on each hand, including their thumbs. Some more human-looking aliens have been identified by production sources as being allegedly Cations, but to be honest, I don't really agree with this assessment, as others have instead identified them as Draylaxians. Unless, oh god, they're Cation human hybrids. When Cations need to move quickly, they can switch to a quadrupedal locomotion, demonstrating typical feline agility and reaction times. They have sharp claws on their hands and feet, with some preferring to forego footwear. The voices of some female Cations have a soft purring quality, with agitated Cations capable of a variety of cat-like hisses and yowls. Cations experience hormonal cycles that include the need to be intimate once a year, which can be alleviated using a libido post. Thanks, Lower Decks. Oh, look at these claw marks. They're like from her horny great-grandma. Hey, Danny, my name is Jeremy. I'm an important cultural sex toy from the past. Please <laughs> deliver me to Dr. Ta'ana so I- I can't believe you're touching it. Oh my god, I'm touching it with my bare hands. Put it back, put it back. The Cation homeworld is called Kate, and it has long been associated with the binary star 15 Lensis. Get it? Lynx, a non-canon biography of Lieutenant Mares, published by Lincoln Enterprises in 1974, describes Kate as having an atmosphere, gravity, and mass all similar to Earth. So, in other words, Class M. This is consistent with the Cations' mammalian biology. The 15 Lensis system itself is located approximately 178 light-years away from Earth, and it consists of a G-type giant star with an F-type companion. According to astronomers, the primary star has exhausted the hydrogen at its core, which has caused it to expand to eight times our sun's radius. It emits 40 times the luminosity of our sun with an effective temperature of 5,164 Kelvin. The two stars orbit each other with a period of 262 Earth years, nearly 10 times the orbital period of Saturn. Thus, the Cation homeworld, which they call Ferasa, could theoretically orbit either member of the binary pair, or even both stars. The former arrangement is called an S type orbit and is stable only if a planet's distance to its primary does not exceed about one-fifth the closest approach 
of the other star. The latter arrangement is called a p-type or circumbinary orbit and is only stable if the planet's distance from the stars is about two to four times the binary separation. Ultimately, the reference book Star Trek Star Charts suggests that Ferasa orbits 15 Lensis b, whose stellar classification of F85 indicates it is roughly 20% larger than our Sun, 7% hotter, and nearly twice as luminous. Thus, to retain an Earth-like climate, Ferasa would probably orbit around two astronomical units from 15 Lensis b. Of course, we're told by various tie-in media that Kate, aka Farasa, is not, in fact, the Cation's native homeworld. Lieutenant Maressa's biography also claims that the Cations and more warlike Kazinti share a common ancestor, much like the Vulcans and Romulans. The non-canon reference book, The Worlds of the Federation, further theorizes that the Cations are descendants of an ancient Kazinti colony. According to Star Trek.com, the Cations retain a fierce warrior side of their personalities, having extremely close family units, but pride themselves on their artistic and philosophical accomplishments. The Kazinti are very unique and that they are one of the few Star Trek antagonists originally created and developed for another work of fiction prior to the 1973 television production, that is, the known space universe created by sci-fi author Larry Niven, starting in 1964. His Kazinti-centric story, The Soft Weapon, was bought by Gene Roddenberry and adapted by Niven for the animated series upon the recommendation of DC Fontana. The Kazinti are ambiguously said by Hikaru Sulu to have fought four wars with mankind in the late 21st century, having lost all of them. According to the animated series episode The Slaver Weapon, based upon Niven's work, some Kazinti tasted human meat during these conflicts. While the original The Soft Weapon storyline suggests the first of these wars was fought with sublight vessels, Star Trek First Contact indicates Earth's first recognized encounter with extraterrestrials occurs with the Vulcans after Zephram Cochran's 2063 warp flight. It's possible that in the Star Trek continuity, the Vulcans helped humanity defend the Sol system from Kazinti raiders. These conflicts ended with the Treaty of Sirius, likely ratified during the 2070s, which severely restricted the Kazinti's access to weapons technology. As it's somewhat problematic to reconcile this claim with the rather well-established Prime Universe chronology, it's likely that these four wars were brief and spread out over a short time span. The first conflict probably took place sometime after USPA's launch of the Friendship One probe in 2067, when mankind still had no clue of what dangers lay ahead in deep space. And the last conflict probably occurred in the mid-2070s or so. There are, of course, numerous examples in our history of very brief wars, like the Six-Day War between Israel and a coalition of Arab states in June 1967. Alternatively, to paraphrase the sentiment I shared in my video about Star Trek The Next Generation's portrayal of the Trill versus Deep Space Nines, let's just say that, well, maybe some of the lore coming out of the animated series doesn't fit with the timeline anymore. It's okay to admit it. The Kazinti's head of state is called the Highest of Kazin, and their government is called the Patriarchy, and indeed the species is very sexist in nature. Their females are considered dumb animals that lack intelligence, leading Kazinti males to similarly underestimate the females of other species. They are strong, aggressive, and carnivorous, and they stand over two meters tall with broad, hunching shoulders. Their internal anatomy includes vertical ribs and multiple hearts, traits that the slenderer Cations might or might not possess as well. The Kazinti are also distinguished from their cousins by their ears that superficially resemble bat wings. Some male Kazinti are telepathic, though the effort to read minds is extremely taxing to them and takes time to recover from. The Kazinti place great importance on individual honor and seeking revenge before calling for help. They consider being wounded and left alive as the ultimate insult, only remedied by combat 
combat to the death. The Kazinti have superstitious legends about mythical, storied weapons like those of the long-extinct Slaver Empire, being haunted by their deceased owners. Despite there being disallowed advanced weaponry besides armed police vessels by the Treaty of Sirius, many get around this by leading a life of piracy. However, other much more noble pursuits in which the Kazinti engage include archaeology and astronomy. Not much is known about the Kazinti homeworld, called Kazin, though it is identified on star charts seen in various Star Trek productions. While Kazin's parent star is identified in Niven's works as 61 Ursi Majoris, Canonically, this is the primary of Archer 4, a planet named after Jonathan Archer, according to the Enterprise episode In a Mirror Darkly. That said, 61 Ursi Majoris is a G-type yellow star like our sun, meaning Kazin's primary might be as well. Star charts and stellar cartography, the Starfleet Reference Library, depict Kazinti space as being a few sectors coreward or north of core Federation territory from a top-down perspective near the Alpha Beta Quadrant border. While we don't know everything about Cation and Kazinti biology, history, and culture, they are at this point staple species of the Star Trek universe. While a race of cat people might seem kind of silly from an alien biology standpoint, as real aliens would most likely look nothing like that, in the context of Trek, Cations and Kazinti are still some of my favorite background species. Various non-canon works flesh them out even further, such as the series of tabletop miniature war games set in the alternate reality of the Starfleet universe, indicating both species are active in sectors of the galaxy far beyond their respective homeworlds. Even in the animated series, Kazinti are shown patrolling space near Beta Lyrae, aka Sheliok, 960 light years away, and the Star Trek novel The Buried Age indicates the Cations have a colony, Carisha, near the Alpha Persei cluster, 570 light years away and close to Carnelian space, another species name dropped in the Next Generation episode Legacy. Hopefully, this video has served as a sufficient overview of the Cations and Kazinti. With that, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. If you haven't subscribed yet, be sure to do that as well so you won't miss future uploads and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash orange river, link in the description or become a YouTube member by clicking the join button on my channel page. By becoming a patron or member, you get access to awesome perks like behind the scenes photos and videos, patron and member only polls, name in the credits, merch discounts, and more. Speaking of merch, links to my store as well as my social media are in the description as well. That's all I have for this week. Live long and prosper.